Hello and welcome. This is a Seesaw special topic called Harness Purpose and Philanthropy with UNICEF Kid Power. My name is Allie. I work on the content team at Seesaw. I am a former fourth grade teacher and I love upper elementary, middle school grades. Um, it was such a wonderful time to be in the classroom. And now I help to connect teachers like you with uh, Seesaw resources um, and inspiration to help you do the amazing work that you do. I'm here with my colleague, Chris. Hi, my name is Chris Scheiner. I am the Partnerships Manager here at Seesaw. And just like Allie, I was a teacher, but I was a kindergarten teacher. So I have a special place in my heart for the little ones and the little teachers who are out there uh, doing amazing things for those uh, small students as they continue to learn and grow. And we are here with uh, colleagues from UNICEF Kid Power. Hi, I'm Wendy. I work with marketing strategy and partnerships for UNICEF Kid Power. I'm also a former teacher, so I'm in very good company here today with all of you. Um, but for the past 20 plus, let's just leave it at that, uh, years, I've been working for educational products companies and service providers supporting um, all of you wonderful teachers. And hello, my name is Tara. I am a current fourth grade teacher um, in Georgia. I started my journey with Seesaw about six years ago and became an ambassador. And then shortly after that, I became a Seesaw certified educator. Um, almost simultaneously, I became interested in UNICEF Kid Power and decided to help UNICEF and Seesaw bridge that gap. Before we jump in, let's take a minute to think about our own experiences as kids. When you were a kid, did you feel like you could make a difference in the world? If yes, why did you feel that way? Was there someone special who helped you develop that belief? And if no, why do you think you didn't feel that way? Um, so you may be wondering, how does this connect to UNICEF Kid Power? Yes, so yes, perfect segue into our mission. Um, really, if you think about it, as when you were a child, you didn't have a job, you didn't earn money, but you could really move and um, you, you cared about the world around you, but you kind of felt like, you know, as, as um, we saw in the poll, you were sort of split, you were sort of unsure. Um, and as one of you said in the chat, you, you weren't quite cynical yet in the world. So you had these hopes and dreams, but you weren't sure what direction to go in to help others. And our mission at UNICEF Kid Power is to inspire an entire generation of kids to grow up believing that they can make a difference in the world around them. And we do that through a free interactive video platform. It's 100% free. There is no charge whatsoever to participate. All of the, um, everything is sponsored through our sponsors and through our partners. So nothing to be concerned about there. Um, the videos after the children watch and participate in the videos allow you to earn impact. So as soon as you watch, you unlock impact that um, critical support, and we'll go through some examples of what kinds of support are included, that UNICEF and its partners deliver to children around the world in need, as well as to kids in your own local communities who need that extra support. So let's look quickly here at some of the motivation, uh, what motivates kids and the motivational research from the, the ed leadership standpoint. Um, we know that Motivation and engagement are critical topics right now, especially during the pandemic. Um, in the beginning, you know, we were we were sort of jolted. We were going through this change. Um, kids' worlds and all of our worlds were turned upside down, and then we kind of got into a rut. Um, and we struggled last spring to really get kids to to reengage. And um, you know, we're we're doing better this time around, but motivation is extremely important. But we know from the research that one thing that truly motivates is helping kids feel like they have a connection and not just kids, but adults have, you have, we all have a human need, a deep human need to feel like we matter and that we are socially connected. And UNICEF Kid Power really feeds into that. And also a sense of purpose. We know from our third party independent research that um, if you can tie sense of purpose to something like some sort of outcome that kids really care about. And kids do care about helping others. 
that they are 55% more active in working toward that income. So we can hitch our wagon to this, um, certainly for educational outcomes, for SEL outcomes, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. And, and why do we even build community? Um, we know that it works. So this research here um, from SHAPS, from Ed Leadership, you know, ASCD is a wonderful resource as you, you all know for Ed Research. Um, but we know that specifically in relation to building community in schools, that there are four ways that you can build that strong sense. Um, and UNICEF Kid Power happens to touch on all four of these bullets. Um, kids will just act more ethically and altruistically. Um, they will have social emotional learning competency benefits. Uh, we're tapping into the motivation on the academic side. Um, we really need to get kids engaged and paying attention and persevering in the classroom. They're more likely to do that if they feel connected from the community side. And they're more likely to avoid some of the more problematic behaviors and avoid violence, drug abuse, et cetera. I'm sorry, I jumped the gun a little bit in the last slide. I started to talk about this one, I'm flip-flopping. But the four ways to, to build a community within a school, um, the connectedness that we've talked about so much already, having a common purpose, um, feeling that sense of purpose, like you're all going in the same direction, you have a clear goal, and you're doing it together, which really is pulled into the third bullet here, the cooperation, in service learning, the philanthropy, um, we know from the research on philanthropy, believe it or not, that there are both physical and mental health benefits from participating in philanthropy. And then lastly, autonomy and agency and influence. Um, we mentioned before that, you know, kids don't earn their own money. So what can they do to make an impact and help others? Um, well, you're going to learn how not only can you, you unlock the local impact and global impact, but you as a classroom with your students will be able to decide together um, what local causes will benefit from the, the local impact that you unlock. And this is just really a, a broad touch on all the different outcomes. Certainly, um, the, the, there are mental health outcomes. We've talked about the SEL outcomes. I'll give you a bit more detail there and their physical health outcomes. So health across the board. Um, the UNICEF Kid Power videos are both physical activity and social emotional learning activities, which makes sense as to why there would be mental and physical outcomes. On the SEL side, um, when you participate in philanthropy, you're literally creating happiness from a neural standpoint. So when we look at MRI scans, um, when people are doing good for others and helping others, they are becoming happy in and of themselves. And their actual physical outcomes from that, you decrease stress, you decrease depression, you decrease inflammation, which was the real big surprise for me. So just crazy good stuff across the board. Um, and then certainly the mental, or excuse me, the um, SEL content that we're delivering in the video, that's an obvious outcome right there of alignment. We're helping kids improve self-control, perseverance and resilience to just keep going and to stay strong. Um, as kids are doing physical activity videos, clearly they're going to be, um, they're experiencing physical health outcomes, uh, lowering their risk for um, childhood obesity, lowering their risk for type two diabetes, for, um, for stress, uh, for, what's the other one I'm forgetting? Lowering your risk of cancer. Like it's, the health benefits are really just off the chart. And then we know as teachers, what happened a few years ago when we decided, um, or not we, but someone <laughs> at the federal level decided that resource uh, re, uh, recess wasn't very important anymore, that the test scores and the academics were the most important thing. So what happened? We did away with recess. What did we learn from the brain-based based research about learning? That when you get physical, when you move, you're actually remodeling your brain so not only are you able to become more focused, which improves the behavior, but your brain has more neural connections and you have more oxygen in your brain and you're better set up to learn. So how does UNICEF Kid Power work? It's really simple. Free three to five minute video clips. Again, 100% free. 
I can't stress this. There's so many teachers who always ask, you know, what's the catch? Like once I sign up, I get like a limited preview and then how do I get everything else? It's 100% free. <laughs> it's all sponsored by our, our sponsors and our organizations that we work with very closely through our partnership um, side of things. So there's nothing that you need to do other than sign up and, and choose the videos. Um, I mentioned already that they uh, align with SEL topics a lot of which are very, very important right now during the pandemic. Um, resilience, staying strong, um, positive growth mindset, dealing with change, um, dealing with new situations. We've all had to be incredibly flexible over the last how many months or year, I guess it is now, um, and just kind of learning how to adjust to that. It's not easy for any of us. And also some other really timely topics related to social justice topics that sometimes are very difficult for us to know how to introduce in the classroom. Um, topics such as racism. How do, you, how do you start that conversation? It's a tough place to start and you can start that through a UNICEF Kid Power video. Our physical activity videos are broken down by level of activity. So we have what we call high energy physical activity videos, which are dances and workouts, which as you can imagine, really, really get your heart rate going. And then we have the moderate activities that are very similar, just a little bit more toned down. And then lastly, the low energy ones, which we call yoga and meditation, which really help kids calm themselves and focus, regulate their own emotions. And then lastly, as you're scrolling through the videos in the UNICEF Kid Power platform, you will see all kinds of different brands and characters and celebrities that you know, and just as importantly, that your kids already recognize or familiar with and love. And they will ask time and time again for, for some of the same videos because they love the characters um, and they already, they already have an affinity for them. Our UNICEF Kid Power videos are aligned with the standards. We look very closely at the CASEL standards for SEL as we're creating video content. Um, we do take some content from our partners, for example, DreamWorks, um, and then we meld that with our own information that we pull from the standards so that things are aligned. We have a lot of PE teachers who use UNICEF Kid Power for the, the physical health benefits, and um, certainly the, the platform content can be aligned with the shape and PE standards. Uh, all schools across the country have school wellness program requirements. And uh, the white paper that we just completed showing the, uh, the outcome alignments for mental and physical health totally play into that and really play into the whole child model, um, the WISC framework that's part of the CDC's um, efforts to address physical and mental health in schools. So pretty broad in terms of outcomes and we're, we're aligned across the board. So we're going to share with you just a clip from one of the videos, and this is kind of a compilation of excerpts that we pulled just to shorten things up so you, weren't watch you wouldn't be watching the entire video. But this is a video about um, dealing with new situations, and it uses content from our DreamWorks partner from a movie called Spirit Writing Free. Think of a situation you've been in where everything or everyone was new to you or maybe the situation you're thinking of is happening right now with the coronavirus your day-to-day -day life may be different than what it was previously when you're in a new and unfamiliar situation how do you feel do you feel nervous excited scared during this kid power up we'll go through some exercises that can help you prepare to face new situations First, let's meet three best friends from Spirit Riding Free Riding Academy. That's us. I'm Lucky Prescott. Prue Granger, sir. And I'm Abigail Stone. Lucky, Prue, and Abigail were all accepted to a new school. Leading up to their first day, they were feeling nervous and a little scared. Once they got to their new school, they each faced different challenges. Meanwhile, Prue does her best to make a good impression with the school's headmaster, but it doesn't go according to plan. Lucky, Prue, and Abigail eventually figure out some ways to adapt to their new environment. Let's go through some exercises that we can use to help us when things are unfamiliar. Ready? First, close your eyes and wrap your arms around your body like you're giving yourself a hug. Hold tight and take three deep breaths. In and out, in and out. 
in and out. Now open your eyes and let your arms hang down again. Nice work. Do you notice any difference in your mood? When your emotions are high, try pausing and giving yourself a hug and taking some deep breaths. This can help your body and mind become more calm. When you're feeling stressed, nervous, anxious, or scared, you can try any or all of these exercises. You've got this. So we heard a strategy in the video clip. The full video has a few more strategies uh, to share with teachers and students about calming themselves, refocusing when their emotions are on high. Uh, think right now about some strategies you currently use to calm and focus your students when they're feeling big emotions. Would it be helpful to have a video that gave students more strategies? Okay, so just to, to circle back on the mechanism on as far as how UNICEF Kid Power works. So you're watching a video with your students or your students are watching the video that you've assigned. By doing that, you unlock two kinds of impact, both global impact and local impact. The second image here on the screen shows a, um, a tracker from the dashboard within UNICEF Kid Power and you'll see that star in the middle with an R-U-T-F in the minute, in the middle, and I'll share what that means in just a minute. But as you watch, when you watch 10 different videos, um, you know, the sections of the, the star will disappear and you unlock an R-U-T-F and that stands for ready to use therapeutic food. And that is a vitamin rich peanut paste that's actually administered as part of a medical, um, medical appointment. So it's not really just food, it's food plus plus medicine and supplements. And it's administered to children who have what's called severe acute malnutrition around the world. And those are kids who quite frankly, without this intervention will not live. And we know from our research that 150 RUTF packets literally saves the life of a child. So that's like a really key metric, obviously. So you're unlocking, automatically unlocking the RUTFs. And then you're also earning what we call Kid Power coins in the Kid Power local exchange within the dashboard. And then for the local exchange, um, you can literally go in together as a classroom and decide how you want those coins to be allocated to be spent within your local community. So we'll talk just a bit more about that. So the two different kinds of impact, again, the global impact of the RUTF that you are unlocking all the time. It's automatic. There's nothing that you need to do. You don't need to go in and decide how that's allocated. That automatically happens as students watch the videos and participate. And then the global impact, which um, are the coins that you unlock. And then you decide together whether to use those for a range of local causes, including family meals, medical services, planted trees, and more. And just to give you a little bit more detail on those, um, family meals, incredibly important right now. More uh, like 30% of the families going to the food bank are visiting for the very first time because of the pandemic. Um, the medical services, right now our medical services are going toward N95 masks, which protect both the healthcare worker and also the child who's coming in for the, the healthcare appointment. And of course, any um, parents or family members who come in with that child. Trees planted in the community. We've had a lot of wildfires over the last year. And so that's just as critical. And we have a new partner that we're getting ready to add to the local exchange and that is internet access. So, yes. And here are just a few real life images through our partners here in the US who are delivering services. Um, to families in need across the country. And also what's really cool within the platform, I'll just say that, that um, it's not as if you just select one local um, unit to benefit and you know that's where your coins will always go. You can change that up as, at any time and you see on the screen how many coins are required to unlock each of the units and you can do a combination. You can give to some meals, some trees, um, whatever you and your classroom decide together. And here's just a quick summary of our impact today. Uh, we talked before about the, the RUTF packets, so you're familiar with those already. 
Um, this and this data is even a little bit older, so we've unlocked even more um, since this slide was put together. But kids, just like the ones in your classroom, and teachers just like you, and even families have worked together to unlock 15 million food packets. And we know because of the 150 um, uh, figure, the 150 packets really saving a life that we have saved over 100,000 lives. Um, just everyday kids who are who are learning at home or learning in the classroom are doing this. So that's pretty powerful. Mm -hmm. And they've also unlocked nearly a million kid power coins, which are spent on those local causes that kids care about. Yeah. And Wendy, we do have a question from Susan in the UK. Um, are students from around the world able to access the videos and contribute to local causes? Right now, UNICEF Kid Power is only based in the US. Um, so you are required to input a zip code in the, for a US school and select a US school to be able to sign up. So um, any teachers outside of the US, you can still participate uh, or you can still access uh, the 10 free CESA activities that we will show you in just a second. Absolutely. Um, and that way you have access to this great content and your students, well, we'll talk about this in a second, but your students will still be uh, making an impact just through Seesaw's account. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Yes, that is correct. So yes, I should have clarified. So we, we, I've walked you through the UNICEF Kid Power platform and really what it is. Mm -hmm. And there are two different ways that you can unlock impact. One is through the UNICEF Kid Power platform once you set up your own account there. But really the first step is just trying some of the activities um, that have been created to go with the video content. And those video links are also present on the Seesaw platform. So that's where you try first. So anything that's been created there, anyone can, can uh, access. Great. And we know from our UNICEF Kid Power data, um, we have incredible retention. We love our teachers and kids. Um, 62% of our accounts, our teacher accounts, participate in UNICEF Kid Power, watching videos at least two times a week. Um, you don't have to do it that often to make an impact, um, but you certainly can. And a lot of teachers find that it builds some motivation and kids just want to do more and more and they continually ask for the videos. Mm -hmm. And But remember, there's also that philanthropy side of it, not only does it make your kids feel good, but it makes you feel good too. It makes everyone feel good. And 95% of teachers would recommend UNICEF Kid Power to a colleague because it's just like, it's a win-win. It's free, it all feels good, everyone benefits. So here are a few testimonials from teachers who use, uh, who use UNICEF Kid Power. Um, and as you're reading through these, Tara is also going to share her personal experience using UNICEF Kid Power in her classroom. Yes, so I use UNICEF Kid Power um, in a few different ways. Um, the most common way that I use it is through our morning meetings. Um, I also assign videos for independent assignments and we do class brain breaks daily using UNICEF Kid Power. Um, my students love it. Um, they especially love when we get to the end of a video and it says you've completed nine out of 10 videos um, in order to unlock an RUFT um, or TF, I'm sorry. And sometimes they beg me to do one more so that we can go ahead and unlock it. So they love seeing that they're making an impact um, by just completing a video. Um, after each video, of course, I remind them of UNICEF Kid Power's mission and how we're helping them help others in need. Um, we're also helping our community. And not only do the kids love it, not only do I love it, but the parents also enjoy it. They also, you know, enjoy knowing that their kids are making differences in the world. Mm -hmm. We have a participant, Gladys, who said she used this with fourth graders and they absolutely loved it. They loved being able to send aid to children around the world. So yet another story of a classroom that loves UNICEF, um, Kid Power. And now we can talk about how UNICEF and Kid Power and Seesaw come together uh, to make the experience even better if that's even possible, but it is. Uh, so we will show you how it works on Seesaw. Um, like we mentioned a bit ago, we have partnered with UNICEF Kid Power to create 10 free Seesaw activities in the community library. 
So those of you who live outside of the US, even though you won't be able to create your own UNICEF Kid Power account, you will be able to access these activities so your students can benefit from these amazing videos. Uh, we'll show you an example, but you can see here um, some of the titles of the 10 videos. They address uh, topics like feelings and change, growth mindset, resilience, and calm and focus and more. So these are 10 activities to help you try out UNICEF or access UNICEF Kid Power if you're not um, in the US. And uh, let's just take a look um, at where you can find them. So one is you can follow this link, uh, web.csa.me slash UNICEF Kid Power. I will post this in the chat. Um, so this is where you can find a lot of information, just a summary of Kid Power, UNICEF Kid Power in case you forget, as well as links to the Kid Power author page. Um, and this is where we'll also post the recording of this webinar. So you can check down there for the recording. Reminder, we'll also send it to you via email, so you don't need to worry. Um, but you can click here to access the 10 activities. Uh, they were just posted in the community library uh, a few hours ago, honestly, and they're already getting a ton of love from the Seesaw community. So we hope you love them just as much. Um, and when you click on an activity, you'll be able to see that um, each activity uh, includes a few components. First, I want to call your attention to the teacher notes. So remember that teacher notes are not visible to students. Um, this teacher note uh, summarizes what the activity is about, um, but it also tells you uh, how to change the video link. More on that in just a second, but I want you to remember that the instructions for changing the video link are right here in the teacher notes. Um, the directions are both typed and recorded, so they're very accessible to all students. We even include an explanation for any families if students are completing you know, this activity at home via the class app, this statement just kind of gives their family members a quick overview as to why this is important. And the activity has the video embedded right in the template. So students can click play, watch the video. And then we have original follow-up prompts that extend the learning and that help students reflect on what they learn to incorporate it into their own mindsets and beliefs. Um, for example, this activity is all about teamwork. Um, and so students are able to reflect on their own strengths and what they want to learn more about. Uh, so this is all related to the video. And then they're also able to uh, use any CSOC learning tool. We know that they can use photos or videos, the microphone to record their voice along with labels and pens uh, to share time when they use their special strengths to help a group or team succeed. So I don't know if you can think as a teacher how what great insights you're going to get from an activity like this. I would just think about the um, stories that my kids would tell at this particular moment. And I just the insights you'll gain uh, about students are just so valuable. But more importantly, the insights that students gain about themselves as they're going through these types of reflection activities are just so important for them to, like we talked about in the beginning, you know, develop that sense of I can make a change in the world or, you know, whatever the topic of the video is, uh, they're able to just really reflect on that and incorporate that into their lives. So um, that is the, that is the um, activity as it is now. And now my colleague Chris is going to walk you through how, um, or sorry, real quick, just to highlight here, um, like I said before, the videos linked in the 10 activities are connected to Seesaw's UNICEF Kid Power account. Um, when teachers watch the video or when students watch the videos on these free activities, that generates impact on Seesaw's account. So your students won't actually be able to choose how their impact is um, spent, but they will be able to accumulate that impact still. So if you want your students to be able to choose where their impact is spent, you are going to want to create your own account. You can follow this URL, unicefkidpower.org slash Seesaw. And again, we will share these links at the end as well as in the follow-up email. Um, but if you wanna check this out now, um, oops, sorry about that. Uh, you can type 
Okay, I'm not gonna be able to copy right now in presenter mode, but you can type this into your web browser um, and check out how to create an account for free. Um, it is free, can't say that enough. But when you create your own account, you'll be able to grab links to videos connected to your account and put those in the Seesaw activities. That way, when you assign the Seesaw activity, your kids are gonna watch the same video, but that um, impact is going to be accumulated connected to your account so you can choose how where that impact is spent. So let's show you how to do this. Um, here I am in a Seesaw activity and Chris will explain the next steps. Absolutely, I certainly will. So the first thing that Allie's gonna do once she kind of clicks on an activity is she's gonna go all the way down to the bottom and then click the three dots and choose to copy and edit the activity because we actually want to modify some pieces of it so that we can change the link to match what our specific classroom is gonna be. So there's copy edit, perfect. Uh, from here, she's gonna scroll all the way down to the actual student template. Uh, we've done all of the hard work and put the links in here for you. And all you have to do is go in here and actually modify it. So if you click there on student template, it's gonna unpack um, all the components for your students. What she's going to do then is just click on the little thumbnail or select it, um, the little boss baby screenshot. Yep, and then uh, unlock this because we've locked this to make sure that students don't move it. So unlock this first, and then you can go to the three dots one more time and actually click on the link, okay? What you're gonna see is you're gonna see a link that we've put in. That's the Seesaw link that connects on our end. And we wanna replace this with one that is for your specific classroom. So what you're gonna do is click the X to get rid of the Seesaw link. And then you can navigate your way over to the actual uh, UNICEF account, the account that you just created going to uh, kidpower.org slash Seesaw. And then you're going to search through the tabs and browse through the actual video library to find the matching video. Uh, it's really easy to look for like screenshots or the little thumbnail picture that you can see. Once you find the picture that you want, uh, which there's a whole bunch of amazing videos that you can kind of search for. Once you find the one that you want, like the Boss Baby video, you can just hover over the thumbnail, click assign, which is that big orange button. And that's going to allow you to get a unique link for your specific classroom that you can then use to gain points and coins in your class so that you can choose where they go. Click on the copy option so that you have it copied to your clipboard and then navigate your way back to Seesaw, paste that link right in the space that you just cleared and you erased it and then make sure you click the check so you save that and you're good to go. Uh, you can choose to lock this again if you want to by going to the three dots and locking it again so your kiddos don't accidentally delete it. And then we're gonna click the check in the top right corner to save all of the changes that we made. Perfect. Also, don't forget to click save <laughs> down here. Yes. And here is your new, your copy and edited activity. So that is how you do it. In this uh, presentation, not only will you get the uh, recording of this um, webinar via email, like I said, so you can review those steps one more time if you need to, but we also outline those steps in these slides. So you copy and edit, you edit the template, you unlock the uh, thumbnail there, and you change the link. So these steps are outlined for you in this slide deck, which you will receive via email, or you can just rewatch this recording uh, to get a review of that, those steps. Once your link is added and the video is connected to your class account, you can click assign. If you're skipping that whole step, you don't need to worry about it at all. You can just click assign when you're ready to assign. Um, and this will share it with your students and they will each be able to complete the activity by watching the video and then answering any of the questions that are included in the template. Chris is going to tell you how you can create your own activities as well. Absolutely. So under the activities tab at Seesaw, we do have the amazing ability to create new activities. Uh, what you're going to do is almost the same process that we just showed by going over to UNICEF itself. Yep, go ahead, that's perfect, Allie. Yep, create a new activity just like this. So what you can do is title your activity matching what the actual video is gonna be. You can add in some student directions if you choose to. 
And then what you can do after you uh, have all these amazing directions with beautiful icons and emojis in is you can go to uh, add to the student template and you can choose the link option at the very bottom to actually add a specific video right into the actual Canvas for students. Just like we got the link from UNICEF before, click that little assign option, copy it. Allie just pasted it quick right there. And then we have this as a locked thumbnail that students can click and open up the video on their end as they can interact with it. Uh, she's just resizing it a little bit. That is an amazing option within Seesaw to make things a little bit more visual for kiddos so that they can just see things in a little, a little better way. Uh, when she's finished, yeah, yeah go ahead. A lot of tools uh, to give instructions like this. If you're a um, Seesaw for Schools or Seesaw Plus Premium user, you also have access to multi-page, so you have more pages to uh, put in writing prompts or follow-up question, reflection questions that you may want students to complete after watching the video. If you're a free Seesaw user, we just recommend keeping everything on one page. So again, you can just resize the video so you have more space. And then you can put your uh, questions, you know, in the, you know, in the space remaining. And students can use all the creative tools to answer them, just like you saw in our example. So if you're creating activities of your own, just think about, you know, when you add the video, what additional questions or follow-up prompts or extension tasks would you want students to complete um, in relation to the video? Um, and then you're able to add that in Seesaw here, either on one page if you're a free user or using multi-page if you are a Seesaw for Schools or Seesaw Plus user. Excellent. Yeah. Don't forget to hit save when you finish your Seesaw activity and then you can assign it right away to your kiddos. <laughs> if you are new to Seesaw and you're thinking, what do you mean create an activity? <laughs> this is all new to me, I am so confused. Have no fear. Uh, we actually have a very quick, it's under 10 minutes, uh, on-demand training to create your first activity on Seesaw, uh, web.seesaw.me slash training. We really encourage you to check that out. You'll learn how to create an activity, not just for UNICEF Kid Power, but any type of content that you want to share with students. So we recommend that. We will share that link in the follow-up email as well. Uh, family members who are connected on the family app can receive class announcements from you, the teacher. Um, on your dashboard, you click that add plus button, then click send announcement, and you'll be able to paste the same assigned link. So that same link you grabbed for the activity, you can paste that into the announcement via the link tool as well. And that way family members can uh, enjoy the videos together. It can be a way for you to just get families more involved in what you're doing in the classroom uh, to form those really powerful homeschool connections that we know have such a big impact on student achievement. Um, and if you are again thinking, what do you mean connect families and send an announcement? Have no fear. We have trainings for that too. These are super quick, just a few minutes. Uh, you'll get up and running connecting uh, families and using CESA announcements. Again, you can find that at web.csat.me slash training. And I should say that if you're using the assign link, when you communicate with parents that you have grabbed from your own UNICEF Kid Power account, then when kids are doing activities at home with their families and watching videos there, then they are also earning credit that rolls up to your classroom account. So that's a great, great tip, Allie. Yeah. So another great thing is to let families know about the impact that they are creating when they watch these with their students, which can help motivate, you know, family members to <clears throat> participate in this way as well. Awesome. And now Tara is going to tell you a little bit more about how she's integrated Kid Power in her classroom. Hint, there are so many ways you can do this effectively and Tara has some amazing ideas. So she's going to share them now. Yes. So um, my experience with UNICEF and Seesaw like integration started last spring when our um, district went virtual in March. Um, and I needed to find a way to continue to engage my students in movement and hard topics, especially ones like staying home and not seeing your friends. Um, and I needed to find a way to continue to connect with them um, daily. And so I started out by creating a weekly template for them that showed all their assignments. And at the very bottom on the template, 
it's ha they had a movement activity. And so they would follow a link to a seesaw activity that had the UNICEF video linked into it. So that way I could keep track of who did it and what experience they had with it. And after they completed the video, I would ask them to just share a quick blurb or maybe a picture of them with a thumbs up showing me that they did it. It kind of helped us continue our sense of community. It helped us feel, you know, united still, even though we were miles away, you know, at our houses. Um, now that we are back face-to-face -face and virtual, um, each week I pick a social and emotional learning standard or topic to focus on. And that is what we will use to discuss in our morning meetings. So I'll set aside about 15 to 20 minutes each day for this. Um, usually it's in the morning just so that I can refer back to what we learned in the morning. Um, after our morning meeting, students will typically go complete the um, questions or they'll talk through the questions and answers at their tables. Um, about midday, we do a brain break. So we usually do like a higher impact video, um, like a workout or a dance. And then if I am kind of looking for something to do in writing and I kind of want to reach out to my students and see how they're feeling or just kind of gauge um, how they're responding to all the changes of this year, I will assign um, a, C a UNICEF video in a Seesaw assignment for them to do independently. And this could be a writing prompt after watching a video or a reflection video. Mm -hmm. oh, that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Again, you can access all these activities at web.seesaw.me slash UNICEF Kid Power. I will uh, share that one more time. Here we go in the chat. Um, we'll also note that on this landing page, uh, you notice that we have the link for where you can create a UNICEF account as well. So you can click this link, create your own UNICEF Kid Power account. Um, just a reminder again that UNICEF Kid Power is currently, um, you can create accounts only if you're in the US, um, but that is the beauty of these free activities in Seesaw is that if you're outside of the US, you can still access these 10 free activities on Seesaw. And that way your students have access to these 10 amazing videos and follow-up activities. Um, and you can check back to see if uh, there's ever an opportunity for us to add more. Um, right now, the videos are just in English. Um, so not in Spanish or correct me if I'm wrong, Wendy, but I believe they're just in English. They are just in English right now. However, we are in the process of of uh, working on the Spanish, so more to come there. And just for a little bit of clarification, uh, maybe at one point we'll be able to expand globally. We'd love to be able to do that. However, it's really a, a content permissions concern because um, content permissions are granted for by country. So that is the reason, even though we would love to service everyone. Mm. So in the meantime, get them through Seesaw. <laughs> um, so again, you can access them here. You can create your own UNICEF Kid Power account if you are currently in the US at unicefkidpower.org slash Seesaw. And now we have some time for questions. How specific is the information about helping locally? Is it based on your state or city? So the local impact that you'll see on the screen actually filters back in um, it's just through our partners who are delivering all over the US. And then we provide reporting through your zip code to each of those partners so that they will allocate, you know, according to that data. So um, it's all tied back to your school zip code. Fantastic. We do have some, we do have some larger partners across the US um, that, uh, for whom we've begun, like for certain geographic areas, we are beginning to add some even more specific local exchange partners. Um, for example, if you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, that's coming to you soon. Uh, but for now, that's all organized through zip code data. Maximum number of classroom accounts allowed for each school. Yeah, I believe it's unlimited. The more the merrier, get them all to join. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. If you are interested in kind of being an advocate on your side as far as at the school level or at the district level, um, we encourage you to do that. We are beginning to work more at the school and district level. Um, and certainly 
you know, any, any teacher who can help us cheer on the cause and spread the word, we, we mm. totally appreciate. Right. It's kind of been a grassroots teacher by teacher effort. We've only been around for about five years. So that's awesome. We're growing strong, that's building awesome. momentum. And then we have an, a question. If we have a Seesaw account, how do we add the free activities? Uh, I have a Seesaw account. I still need to open the account with UNICEF. Right. So um, I will show you when you go to um, the landing page, you can say click the 10 activities. Um, if you're logged in, you may already, um, this may already be, uh, you may already be logged in. But what you're going to do is click save activity, or you may see a heart here as well. So you're either going to click the heart, or you're going to click save activity. And now it's in my library. Like we said, um, these first 10 activities, you don't need to create a UNICEF account right now if you're not sure if you want one. One, one reason we have these 10 free activities on Seesaw is for you to try it out. So you can save these activities, you can watch the videos with your students, they can complete all the reflection prompts and you're good to go. The reason you would might want to create a UNICEF Kid Power um, account of your own is like we showed you so that you can use your own account link for students to watch that video. And that way you're able to accumulate coins and impact connected to your own personal account so that you can choose where that impact goes. Currently with these 10 free activities, it is just connected to Seesaw's UNICEF account and uh, it's still generating impact. You just won't be able to choose uh, the local impact. All right, we are a minute past the hour. So we will wrap this up today. On behalf of Seesaw and UNICEF Kid Power, we hope that this has been helpful and that your students love these videos. We're confident that they will. Uh, we can't wait to see uh, so many more students just develop that belief that they can make a difference in the world because they can. So thank you for all that you do and we will see you again soon. All right, take care everyone.